Okay, welcome to the course unit 4 of our forensic photography. The topic for today is all about the nature and characteristics, sensitized materials, the different types of photographic films, and the kinds of photographic paper. We're going to talk about the sensitized material. This is the second element in the photography. Diba? Last week, ang napag-aralan natin is the first element, which is the light. Now, let's go with the sensitized materials. So, pag sinabi nating sensitized materials ng camera, okay, ang an analog camera siya sabi natin ngayon dito, ha? we're talking about the film and photographic paper. So, the term sensitized materials refers to film and photographic paper that is basically composed of emulsions containing silver halides, suspending in a gelatin, and coated on a transparent or reflective support. Ang tanong, ma'am, Bakit po ba tinatawag na sensitized materials itong sa film and photographic paper? From the world itself, sensitized, ibig sabihin sensitive. Ang tanong, saan po sila sensitive, ma'am? Kay light. Kaya siya sinabing sensitized materials. Kasi bawal na bawal po silang ma-expose kahit katiting na light. Bakit? Bakit? Pag, bakit sila sensitive sa light? Kasi kapag yan, na-expose na sa light, itong mga silver halides niya, okay, yung mga chemicals within it, eh, alin, masisira. Hindi na siya magagamit for photography. Hindi mo na siya beding um, ilagay sa camera kasi wala na siyang baka capture na image. Kaya sila tinatawag na sensitized materials. So, ito yung film and photographic paper. Ang photographic paper, hindi ito yung simpleng photo paper lang na alam nyo ha, na pwede nyo i-print. Hindi po. Iba yung photographic paper. So, what is silver halides? Ano ba yung silver halides na to? So, it carry many specks of metallic silver, so-called sensitivity specks, with a mount in mass to about 1 over 1 uh, billion part of the silver halide crystals. It is a compound silver with fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine crystal. This electric charge on the specks attracts silver ions from the neighboring silver halides, and as the silver ions accumulate, they become metallic silver, causing the speck to grow halide ions. At the same time, they migrate to the surface of the silver halide crystals and are absorbed by the gelatin emulsions. In short, Alam nyo po yung pinag-aralan natin ng history na may silver chloride, silver iodine, yung may mga bitumen, yung may mga albumen, okay? Yan ang kapalit niya in a modern world. So, hindi na sila gumamit ng mga ganong chemicals. Anong ginamit nila? Silver halides na. Kung ang silver halides na yan, ano ba ang combination niya? Tignan nyo, nandun ang chlorine, nandun ang bromine, nandun ang iodine, nandun ang crystal. So, yan ang mga pinayan ng makabagong or parang... pinakabagong uh, emulsion na nilagay nila sa pinaka-outer surface ng film. Okay, ito yung mga nagre-react sa light. So, film. Let's start now with the film. What is film? Nakakita na ba kayo ng film? Yung maliit lang? Ha? May nakakita na ba sa inyo yung film ng pang-camera? ba? Film, it is a cellulose... Ayan. It is a cellulose tape or plate where silver salts are suspended capable of recording light. So, its primary function is to record the image that is focused upon it by the lens of the camera. So, siya yung mismong nagiging recorder ng ating camera. Diyan niya sinisib sa film na yan. So, photographic film is a strip or sheet of transparent plastic film. Plastic po ba siya, ma'am? Yes, plastic siya. Okay? Base coated on one side with a gelatin emulsion and then containing microscopically small light, sensitive silver halide crystals. The sizes and other characteristics of the crystals determine the sensitivity, contrast, and resolution of the film. So, yung film, kung makikita nyo, mamaya may video naman tayo. Uh, made of plastic yan. Tapos, yung isa, rough, yung ano niya, yung pinaka-surface niya, do, na, doon nakalagay yung mga silver halide, silver salts, okay? Yung sa kabila, yun yung pinaka-smooth part niya. So, let's watch this one. Oh, what is a film? 
Without any shadow of a doubt, we love movies. Big movie releases gross hundreds of millions of dollars and the names of actors and directors are considered common knowledge. But while we certainly love films, many of us overlook one of the most important elements in all of film history, the film itself. It's a medium that's been around for well over a century, and while these strips of celluloid contain some of the most well-known images in all of human history, most of us are in the dark when it comes to film. So this begs the question, what is film? Well, let's break it down and look at its different components. These little cutouts, called perforations, run along the edge of the strip. They provide the camera a way to move the film around easily and accurately to keep an even spacing between images. Some film contains a strip for recording audio from the camera. This is either a magnetic strip or an optical waveform. It's worth noting, though, that when filming motion pictures, audio is recorded to a separate device. Frames are the rectangles that contain the image. And just like how megapixels determine the size of a digital image, the size of these frames impacts how big the image can be printed or projected before it'll lose quality. So the frames, perforations, and audio strips are often rearranged to make space for a bigger image. Super 8 film, in comparison to standard 8mm film, for example, shrinks the perforations on the edge to make space for a larger image across the width of the stock. But there's also the tried and true, just make it bigger approach to film stocks. 16mm is the next size up, with standard 16 and super 16 being the popular formats, although both are actually shot on the same single per film. 35mm is probably the most notable film. It's the standard for Hollywood as well as the size of the film in those little canisters that you'd buy for still photography. But while the size is the same, they're both different formats. 70mm film is the largest available film stock for the biggest of the big screens. You'll note that this IMAX 70mm film runs horizontally rather than vertically, because turning the frame sideways is a more efficient layout than vertical, meaning the extra space can be spent on making the frames even larger. Now while there are many different sizes and configurations of film, modern film stock all works the same way. The film itself is composed of several different layers of filters, barriers, and light-sensitive emulsions, but I'm going to boil it down to just its two main parts. The key to what makes film work is a light-sensitive coating on the film composed of tiny little grains of silver halide. When struck by light, these grains change from one state to another. When developing film that's been exposed in a camera, a chemical bath removes only the grains that have been changed by interaction with light. And the more grains that get removed from an area, the whiter that area will become. And the more grains that get left behind, the darker that part of the image will be. Now this is fine for plain old black and white film, but to record color we'll need three of these light sensitive layers. Each of these layers will be sensitized to only react with light of a single color. So we'll need one blue, one green, and one red layer, all stacked together in that order. Just like you can mix primary colors of paints together to make other colors, red, green, and blue are the primary colors for light as seen by the cones in the human eye. Now since we have separate recordings of the red, green, and blue information, we can recombine these to get the full color image. This is a really cool topic by itself, but I didn't have time to go into much detail, so if you want to learn more about how your kindergarten teacher lied to you about what primary colors are, or why film negatives are such weird colors, go check out the bonus video. These emulsion layers, as well as some additional filters and barriers, are all sandwiched together in a flexible, transparent material. In the early days, this was a nitro celluloid, but this proved to be... explosive. I mean, it's literally chemically related to gun cotton, an early military-grade explosive. This made the safer acetate celluloid films a much welcome creation, although with the silver halide, it still technically is flammable. Acetate-based film stocks were around for a good portion of the century before film manufacturers began to favor polyester plastic as a base, starting in the 1990s. And there you have it. All these components working together create the height of image capturing technology of the 20th century. And while other technologies of its era have either been upgraded or replaced by newer technologies, film has survived relatively unchanged. And even more impressively, while more and more movies are being produced with digital cameras, Film is still here, and for the time being, a viable alternative to the best digital cameras we have available today. But film is going away. Don't be sad though, digital is a worthy successor, and it may very well go on to build a legacy as lasting as film. But while all the tools may soon be going digital, the people who use them will still be film makers.
Okay? Nakita niyo ba? So, ganun ang film. Anong tanong, ano nga ang tawag doon sa mga tiny holes ng film? What do you call them? Ha? Huh? What do you call them, those tiny holes of the film? So, we called it perforations, yung uh, film holes na yun. Perforations, also known as film holes. Okay? Film holes. And then, yung color black we, uh, within it, ang tawag doon, strip. Tapos, ma'am, yung pinaka-square or rectangle sa gitna, ang tawag nila doon, frame. Eh, ma'am, bakit meron siyang separate? Okay? Binibilang nila per frame. Kaya, for example, sabi niya, 25 shots lang po yung film na to. Ibig sabihin, meron lang siyang 25 frames. Ibig sabihin, 25 ka lang pwedeng mag-take ng picture. Tanong, bakit po may butas, ma'am? Bakit meron siyang perforations? Kung nanood kayo doon sa mismong video, okay? Ang sinabi niya doon, kaya siya meron siyang film holes or perforation, it is because doon papasok yung sprocket ng analog camera. Next week, pag-uusapan natin ang camera at makikita niya doon paano ba nilalagay yung mismong film sa camera. Okay? Para siyang sa bike. Bali, it yung pinaka-perforations ng ating film, eh yun yung kadena. Tapos, merong sprocket itong si analog camera. Responsible for what? Para umiikot yung film. Pumupunta siya sa next slide. Okay, that is the film. We have two types of film na ginagamit ngayon. The black and white and the color film. Magkaiba po yung black and white at saka color film? Yes. So, as to that, punta muna tayo dito. The kinds of film. So, we have different kinds of film. Number one, we have the ordinary or panchromatic film. Pag sinabi natin ordinary or panchromatic film, these are the sensitive to all colors, especially in blue and violet. Okay, it's, it is suitable for the general use in the preparation of black and white photo wraps. Another thing naman, we have blue sensitive film. A film specially treated that makes it more sensitive to blue. Kaya di ba may mga photograph noon na parang, but, so, bas parang color blue siya. Ayan. Kasi may, baka ginamit nila blue sensitive film. So yung mga blue sensitive film na to, eh, mas more sensitive siya sa blue. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Dun sa light na blue. Next, we also have the orthochromatic or caudalite film. This is sensitive to all colors except the red color. So, this is good for fingerprint or document or the high contracts. So, dati sa ating forensic science or sa ating kapag nagkakandak sila nun ng ating mga investigations, ginagamit nila tong orthochromatic or caudalite film, lalo na kapag ang kinukuha nilang evidences is for the, for the purpose of the fingerprint and document examination. Again, this is the orthochromatic or caudalite film, sensitive to all colors except in the color red. Then we have the Polaroid film. What is Polaroid? What is Polaroid? This is your instant instant camera. So a Polaroid film is a special type of film of sensitized materials that produces a photograph immediately after exposure. Di ba sa Instax, kapag kaklik nila, lalabas yung pinaka-film, tapos basta na-expose na siya kahit anong light, o, ano gagawin nila? Diba parang papahangin na nila tapos pinapagpag nila sa air. Tapos habang pinapagpag nila sa air na expose siya sa light noon, doon siya nagkakaroon ng image. Okay, that is the Polaroid, Polaroid film. Then we also have the color film, okay? All film ending in color. So these are the color negatives for prints ends with the word color and color transparency for slides ends with the word chrome. Kaya nga 'di ba meron tayong Koda color. Koda Chrome. Yan. And syempre, meron din tayong X-ray film. So, ginagamit yan kapag nagpapa-X-ray kayo. A material which is sensitive to X-ray region of the electromagnetic spectrum. And then, the last one, we have the color infrared film. It is a special type of film which is sensitive to the infrared radiation. Siyempre, dito, gagamit na sila ng infrared light to violet and blue-green. In investigative photography, it is useful in laboratory analysis of question documents. Ito, lalo na yung mga 
uh, chart document or yung mga sunog na na document, ginagamit nila yan. So, in the discovery of old or faded tattoos or areas where the small objects are hidden under skin and in the construction of camera traps. Sa color infrared film, alam nyo dati, lalagyan lang nila kayo ng infrared light. Okay? And then, gagamitin nila yung color infrared film. Kapag katik ng picture sa'yo, makikita nila kung saan yung bugbug mo. For example, di ba kapag nabugbug tayo, uh, kanwari, na ano ka sa pinto, ganyan, natamaan yung siko mo sa pinto. Di ba, mabubugbug yan? Pero after a week, mawawala na yung bugbug mo. Hindi na yan visible to your human eye. Diba? Pero anong ginagawa ng mga infrared light? Okay? Ang ginagawa ng infrared light, kapag nilagyan mo yan, okay, ng infrared light, yung pinakabraso mo na natamaan sa pinto, tapos gagamitan tayo ng camera okay, na gumagamit ng infrared film, lilitaw pa rin po yan yung bugbog na yan. Ganun na kaya, kaya ginagamit ang infrared noon, lalo na sa investigation. Lalo na rin sa mga documents. Tignan nyo, pati nga old or faded tattoos na gagamit nila dito. Eh. Yung sa mga questionable documents naman, kapag for example, sunog, o kanwari, nangitim na yan, as nawawala na lahat, uh, ginagamit nila yan yung color infrared film para makita nila yung anong nakasulat. Okay? It is a special type of film which is sensitive to the infrared Radiation. So, those are the different types or kinds of film. So, what are the basic film sizes? Oh, meron din silang sizes dun, di ba? Pinakita nyo, hindi lang po siya yung normal na gantong size. Madami siyang size. Meron siyang 110 film, 35 mm film, 120 and 220 roll film, and the 4 by 5 inch film. So, we have the 110 film. It is very small. Not good for enlargement. Pinakamalait. Maliit yan. And then, next one, we have the 35 mm film. Ito yung normal. Or lagi natin ginagamit. Siguro kung face-to-face -face lang ngayon, eh, makatry nyo yan at magagamit nyo sa ating camera. This is the 35 mm film. Used for 35 mm adjustable cameras and widely used today. Okay? Lagi itong ginagamit natin sa mga analog camera natin ngayon. We also have the 120 and 220 roll film used by medium format cameras and the last one we have the 4x5 inch film wherein ginagamit nila ito for the sharp photographs that are passable. So those are the basic film sizes. Again, among uh, uh, each of this 35mm film is the most and widely used of today. Okay? So uh, let's watch this one. That is the short preview lang ng mga sizes ng mga film. Again, ano nga yung ginagamit natin mostly today? It is the 35mm film. So, let's start na with the black and white film. Kapag ba sinabing black and white, ma'am, ano ang napoproduce na photograph nito? Eh, the black and white, as in wala siyang color, kundi lang yung mga white and gray scale lang. So, most modern black and white films are called panchromatic films. Pag sinabi nga natin ng panchromatic films, these are sensitive to all colors to record the entire visible spectrum. Some films are ultrachromatic, recording visible lights and wavelengths. So, there are a number of black and white films available for 35mm film cameras and medium format films cameras that can still be found in stores. While there are also a number of special films that require unique processing. It would be best to work with the basic black and white film pipes and learn how the film works before using this special films. 
So, what are the parts of black and white film? Meron lang siya tang tatlong part. The emulsion, the gray and anti-halation baking, and the base. Again, emulsion, gray, anti-halation baking, and the base. Let's start with the emulsion. Itong emulsion na to, dito nakalagay ang ating silver halides. So, it consists of crystals of light sensitive compound, the silver nitrate, evenly distributed throughout the plastic base or material. Ito yun. Okay. Ito yung plastic. Okay. Tapos ito yung emulsions niya. Silver halide emulsions are universally sensitive to ultraviolet radiations and some wavelengths of blue light. Gelatin is universally used as the medium that holds the crystals in the emulsion. So, lalagyan muna ng parang pinakat glue. Okay. Yun yung gelatin. And then, ilalagay nila itong mga silver halides na yan. Then, meron doon tayong tinatawag na gray or anti-halation backing. It is placed between emulsion and base. So, it is placed between the emulsions and the plastic base of a film to prevent whatever light passes through the emulsions and reflected by the base back to emulsion which forms halo. So, syempre yung pinaka namamagitan sa kanilang dalawa. Okay? Again, so nakalagay si silver halides sa emulsions. Ano yung plastic material natin? Ito yung base. So, these are made of plastic materials and they serve as the support. Ayan. Ayan siya, o. Oh. Ito yung, nakita nyo yung grains. Ito yung silver halide grains. Lahat yan, okay? Ang tawag dyan ay, alam, emulsion. Okay? Emulsion. Diyan parang nakalagay yung panaka-crystals or pinaka-parang sinatawag nating mga glitters nila na nagre-react sa light. At tapos, ito yung pinaka-plastic film base. And then, we have the anti-halation layer. So, how black and white film works? So, paano nga ba po ba nagre-react or ano po ba ang nangyayari sa ating black and white film? So, the image on the black and white film negative is actually the inverse of the actual image. Pag sinabi nating inverse, kabaligtaran. Okay? Kabaligtaran po. So, that is to say that all the areas that show clear on the negative will be black on the print and all the black areas of the negative will show white. Nakakita na ba kayo ng film talaga or hindi pa? Have you ever tried yung pinaka-film na ilagay sa araw? Diba? Ang mangyayari doon... Magnukuli black? Yes. Diba kapag nakita ka ng film, uh, usually ang mangyayari dito... Wait nga lang, hanapin ko dito. Ay, video na pala yung next niya. Ito. Sa film kasi, makikita nyo yun, kapag nag-take kayo ng capture, makikita nyo, for example, tao siya, okay? Nag-selfie ka doon sa mismo film, uh, sa mis, uh, sa, gamit ang analog camera na yon So, ang mangyayari nun, yung uh, ikaw na tao, magiging black ka. Magiging black ka nyan. Tapos, yung paligid mo, magiging white. Pero kapag na-print, okay, ikaw yung white, tapos yung background mo yung black. Ganun ang nangyayari sa black and white film. Kaya nga sabi niya, inverse, kabaligtaran. This is to say that all the areas that show clear on the negative will be black. So, kapag nakita mo na ano to, white siya, pag na-print siya nun, magiging siyang black. Baligtad siya. Kung ano nakita mo na color black siya, kapag ka-print niya, siya yung white. Diba? This is to say that all the areas that show clear on the negative will be black on the print and all black areas of the negative will show white. So, baligtad ang nangyayari po sa ating black and white film. So, when printing on the photo paper light, it is able to pass through the clear areas of the negative resulting in more light hitting the paper and leading to the dark spot. So, black areas of the negative are the opposite. Maligtan sila, di ba? Resulting in a less lighting hitting the paper to leave a white spot. There are many shades of gray in the between depending on the density of the negative. So, panoorin natin to. Paano po ba ginagawa yung film? Just 
Ganun nila gawin yung film, yung pinaka-factory ng Ilford. Okay? So, let's go to the next slide. So, we have the characteristics of black and white film. Okay? We have the characteristics, we have the emotion speed, the spectral sensitivity, the granularity or graininess. Yun lang. So, tatlo lang. Meron siyang tatlong parts, meron din siyang tatlong characteristics. Let's start first with the emulsion speed. Again, ano nga yung emulsion speed or yung emulsion? Ito yung mga silver halides natin na nagre-react sa light. Okay. Kaya siya meron siyang emulsion speed. Bakit, ma'am? Ibig sabihin, gaano kabilis ba mag-react yung mga silver halides na nakalagay ka emulsion? Kaya meron siyang tinatawag na emulsion speed. It is the measure of photographic film's sensitivity to light. So, it determines by sensitometry and measured various numerical scales. And the most recent being used is the ISO system. Meron tayong ano eh, mga pang-count niyan. Okay? Relatively, in sensitive film with a correspondingly lower speed index requires more exposure to light to produce the same image density as more sensitive film and is thus commonly termed as the fast films. Okay. Meron kasi tayong mga emulsion speed. Meron tayong slow film and a fast films. Yung mga fast films, ang fast films, ibig sabihin, kapag konting react lang sa light, agad na form na yung image. Kapag naman sinabi natin slow films, okay, eto na yung uh, 5 seconds mo muna siyang i-expose sa light para lang ma-record yung image. Okay? Doon ang tinatawag nating emulsion speed. Gaano ba kabilis nagre-react yung mga silver halides na yan sa ating light? So, paano yung mga yan? Ayan. Kung makikita nyo sa mismong film, meron tayong emulsion speed indicator. Kapag bibili kayo ng film, sayang nga lang hindi tayo face-to-face, -face, kaya hindi kayo pinapabili ng film. So, emulsion speed indicators, meron tayong ASA, DIN, and ISO. ISO is the modernized among them three. So, itong ASA is other na otherwise known as American Standard Association, hindi ASA ha, okay, is ASA. It is expressed in arithmetical value, in rating. Here, the ASA ratings are 12, 25, 50. Pag sinabi natin arithmetical, dumudoble lang po siya. Tingnan nyo, pinakamababa niya ay 12 and then 25, 
fifty, one hundred, two hundred, four hundred, eight hundred, and one thousand six hundred. In the market, ASA one hundred is the commonly known as plus X. Double X naman for the ASA two hundred and tri X naman as for four hundred. Okay po. So that is ASA. It is paano nila nabibilang in arithmetical value in rating. Okay, kaya nga. Ah, ASA. And then, we also have the DIN. Okay? Means, ito ay eh, masyadong parang French. Dutch industry norman. Okay? Its rating is expressed naman in logarithmic value. Kung kay, kay ASA, arithmetical value siya. Kay DIN, it is a logarithmic value. Paano naman to? There, there is also, kung dito sa arithmetical, pag sinabing arithmetical, it doubles up. For example, 25 plus 25 equals 50. 50 plus 50 equals 100. Dito naman sa logarithmic Arithmetic value, meron lang siyang constant number na ina-add. Just for example, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, and 33. Ano yung constant number na ina-add sa kanya? Ano yung constant number? 3. 3. Okay, 3. So, ganun ang sukatan or bilangan naman ng DIN na yan. Itong Dutch Industry Norman. Magkabalik na sila, ha? And the last one, syempre, the pinaka-modernized is the ISO. ISO means International Standards Organization. So, its rating is expressed in combined na. Kung ito, in arithmetical, ito, logarithmic, ito, pinagsaba niya. So, between arithmetical and logarithmic values, the ASA ratings are as follows. For example, 12 over 12, 25 over 15, tignan nyo, 100 over 21, 200 over 24. So, parang same lang. Kasi kapag bibili po kayo ng film, makikita nyo yan sa pinaka-box niya. Sabi niya, emulsion speed. Gaano do kabilis na, na gaano siya kabilis para ma, para malaman mo kung gaano katagal i-expose sa light. Makikita mo yan. Yung iba naka ASA, yung iba naka DIN. So itong ISO pinagsama lang niya. Okay? Ah, uh, kunwari, um, hindi nila maintindihan yung ASA, hindi nila maintindihan yung DIN. Ang ginawa ng ISO, okay, pagsamahin na lang natin yung ASA at saka DIN. So for example, bumibili siya ng kunwari 100 Okay? Mumibili siya ng 100 na emulsion speed na ASA. Ang katumbas niya sa DIN ay 21. Bakit, ma'am? 1, 2, 3, 4, 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, 21. Ano siya sa ISO? 100 and over 21. So, pinagsama lang niya, okay? Para hindi sila nalito whether ASA siya or DIN siya. That is ISO. Again, these are just the speed indicators or paano mo lalaman gaano kabilis or gaano kabagal yung film na yan kapag nagre-react siya sa mismong light. And then, next one. Okay na tayo kay emotion speed. The next one is the spectral sensi. So, what is spectral sensitivity? It refers on the sensitivity of the film and the colors of light which eliminated in the object being photographed. So, ano yung mga yan, ma'am? Ito na yung merong uh, mas sensitive siya sa blue, mas sensitive siya sa red, mas sensitive siya sa violet, ganyan. So, a classification of film according to spectral sensitivity. Ano... Saan siya mas sensitive, sabi nga niya. So, blue sensitive film. This film is sensitive to what? To ultraviolet rays and blue light only. So, kung bibili ka ng film, tapos sabi mo blue sensitive film lang, therefore, ang sensitive lang siya sa mga ultraviolet rays and blue light only. Meron din tayong orthochromatic film wherein sensitive lang siya in blue sensitive film which is sensitive to ultraviolet rays and Blue light only. Sa atin namang uh, pangchromatic film, sensitive siya against kay UV light, radiation, blue, green, and red light, and all colors of light. Diba? Kanina din, binanggit ko sa inyo, ang pangchromatic film is sensitive to all colors. And then, syempre, and the last one, we have infrared film. This is the film sensitive to UV rays, blue, red, and then, syempre, hindi mawawala si infrared Ray. So, that is spectral sensitivity. Sinasabi naman niya, anong type of light siya sensitive? 
And the last one, the last characteristics of black and white film is the granularity or graininess. So, ano bu yung granularity or graininess? This refers to the size of the metallic silver grains. Mapino ba siya, ma'am? Diba? Malalaki ba yung silver grains niya? Diba? That are formed after development of an exposed film. So, generally, the size metallic silver grains are dependent on the emulsion speed of the film and the type of developing solution that is used in processing. The rule is, tignan nyo ah, the lower the emulsion speed rating of the film, the finer is the grain and conversely. The higher the emulsion speed rating of the film, the bigger are the grains. So likewise, a film developer will produce a finer grain than a paper developer when used for film processing. Ulitin lang natin ha. Inverse ulit siya. Tignan nyo. The lower the emulsion speed, mabagal. Okay? Mas, kapag mas mabagal siya, the finer the grain. Okay? Kung gusto mo na mas mabagal, okay? Mas mabagal yung film mo. Kanwari, mag-expose pa lang siya after 5 seconds. Kailangan, okay, ang bibili niyang grain is mas mapino. Or yung, yun ang characteristics ng black and white film niya. Kapag naman the higher the emulsion speeds or yung mas mabilis siya, the rating of the film are the bigger in grains. So, ibig sabihin, ganito lang yung pinaka-panukala niya. Kapag mas malaki yung grains, mas mabilis mag-re-react. Okay? Kapag maliit na naman yung mga grains na yan, mas mabagal siyang mag-re-react. Ano yung mga grains na pinag-uusapan natin dito? Ito yung mga silver halides na nag-react po kay light. Nakakasunod ba kayo niyan sa pinag-uusapan natin? Sa photography, alam niyo ba, lagi tayong baligtad. Pati sa mga pag-use ng camera hole, ganyan. Uh, sa film pa lang tayo, inverse na siya. Diba? Ano sinasabi dun sa black and white film? Kapag inexpose mo yan sa light, kung ano yung nakita mo sa film na color black, kapag na-print siya, yung magiging white. Kung ano yung nakita mong uh, na white sa mismong film, kapag na-print siya, yung magiging black. Inverse tayo. Okay. Ganun din sa ating granularity or graininess. Kung gusto mo ng fast films, di ba? Or mabilis na films or high rating, therefore, kailangan, anong, anong sasabihin mo? Mas malaki. Manipis. Oo, mas mano siya. Mas bigger ang grain niya. Naiintindihan niyo po ba niyan? Hello? Naiintindihan niyo ba niyan ang characteristics ng ating black and white film? Again, we have three lang. Kasi black and white lang naman siya. Yung emulsion speed, gaano kabilis? Spectral sensitivity, sa anong color siya magiging mas sensitive, di ba? And the granularity or graininess of the film. So, tapos na tayo kay black and white. Okay. Punta na tayo kay color film. Tanungin ko sa inyo, kung papipiliin kayo, black and white or color film? Color film. Bakit? Mas okay po pag may color. Mas okay po pag may mas, color. Mas na, mas, mas film. Malinaw. Mas film, mas malinaw. Okay. Noong una, syempre, ginagamit natin sa crime scene, black and white, kasi wala pa tayong color film noon, di ba? Pero nung nag nagkaroon ng color film, mas maganda. Bakit po? Kasi with this, with this color film, mas accurate yung makukuha nating images. For example, sa crime scene, di ba? For example, sa crime scene, Kapag black and white ang ginamit nating film, kapag may nakita kang picture na parang gray sa ilalim, hindi mo yan madidistinguish. It is what? Water ba yan? Blood ba yan? Juice ba yan? Di ba? Hindi mo yan makikita kasi sa black and white parang color gray lang siya. Or pinaka, parang kasi ang nag-iiba lang sila ng tones doon eh. White, gray, black lang talaga ang color kapag black and white film. So, nagaano lang siya sa tones. So, hindi mo madidistinguish yan whether yung liquid na doon sa picture is tubig ba ang laman, di ba? juice ba, or uh, dugo na pala. Pero because of this color film, mas accurate yung nabibigay natin. Ibig sabihin, we can produce them the accurate representation of the crime scene. So, therefore, if you catch or you already take a photo within the crime scene, you can easily distinguish whether it is a blood, di ba? Is it a water or so whatever. So, the earliest attempt to produce color films involved hand painting and the negative or tinting it dye. So, stencil-based techniques such as patek chrome and the hand shell color 
process were an extensions of this. So several dice were rolled over the negative, each with an appropriate stencil underneath to restrict the die to the desired parts of the print. So since transparent dye preserves the varying brightness of the black and white image, the result could look naturalistic, but in fact, the choice of what colors to use and where was made by a person. Kinema color was the first. Okay, tandaan nyo to. Si Kinema Color was the first process to capture natural color on film stock. Ang hirap po kaya niyan. Ayan. Kung yung ating, uh, tawag dito, kung yung ating tinatawag na, what do you call this? Yung black and white film, meron lang siyang tatlong part. Diba? Meron siyang emulsion, meron siyang base, at sya kayong pinaka-anti-helation backing sa color film, sabi ko nga sa inyo, madami siya. Kasi nga, color na yan eh. So, the color film consists of seven layers. Ayan. The emulsion, the base, anti-helation backing, the yellow filter, the subbing layer, the ultraviolet absorbing layer, and the super coat. Ayan. So, let's start first with the emulsions. So, ito yung emulsions. Ito yun. Ito yung, number, yung color, pinaka-brown. Okay? Ito na yung silver halides. So, it is the most fundamental layer in the film. It is the emulsion layers adhered to the base by means of a binder. So, the, the emulsions is photographic part of the film consists of dispersion of light-sensitive materials in a collodial medium. Usually, gelatin ang ginagamit nila. So, carried as a thin layers on a film base. Emulsion is made by dissolving silver bullion in nitric acid to form silver nitrate crystals. So, these crystals are dissolved and mixed with the other chemicals to form silver halide grains. And then, suspended in the gelatin emulsion coatings, the size and degree of light sensitivity of these grains determine the speed or amount of light required to register an image. So, that is emulsion. So, in color films, there are three dye layers. Sabi nga niya. Registered. Ano yung ayong dye layers niya? Ito yung mga colors natin. So, registers in the various parts of the color. One on the top of another. Kung naalala nyo sa history, di ba nga, pinagpatong-patong nila yung pinakamadaming film para lang uh, makuha nila yung color film. One on the top of another for the cool color of effect in cyan magenta, and yellow dyes. Ano sa, sa tingin nyo, ano yung three dye layers na pinagsama-sama nila dito? Ha? Para mabuo ang cyan, magenta, and yellow. Ha? Ano? It is the? Red? Blue, red, green. Blue, red, green. Diba? Blue, red, green. Alin yun? Yun yung tinatawag natin primary, primary colors. colors. Primary so, color. so, in fact, each color may have up to three layers. Fast, medium, and slow. So, to capture the full range of scene brightness from the deepest shadow to the brightest highlights and to provide good exposure latitude. The three components also optimize the color contrast and the tonal reproduction of film. In each emotion layer, color couplers are dispersed in tiny oil droplets around the silver halide crystals during the subsequent processing steps. The silver is removed, leaving only the color dye clouds where film grains used to be. So, what are the three types of color couplers? Ito naman, uh, di ba yung basic na tinatawag natin one top of another is yung red, blue, and green. Tapos, nilalagyan nila ng coupler or yung dye. O, ano ang pinaka-dye niya? Siyempre, yung tatlong ating secondary. The yellow, magenta, and cyan. So, yellow dye forming coupler, it is located in the blue sensitive emulsion layer. Ito yun, di ba? Green, uh, tapos magenta naman or dye forming coupler. It is located in the green sensitive emulsion layer. This emulsion layer is not sensitive to red light. It is not only sensitive to green. It is only sensitive to green light but also to the blue light. However, the blue light cannot reach it because of the yellow filter. And then we have the cyan dye forming coupler located in the red sensitive emulsion layer. Ito kasing blue, green, and red, kasama siya dito sa ating pinaka yan, yan, sa pinaka layers ng ating colored film. So, nilalagyan lang nila na ang um, dye, ayan, para mabuo itong yellow, magenta, and cyan. Once na nagdikit ang blue at saka green, nagdikit ang green at saka red, ganyan. 
So, another parts of the color film, we have the base. Ano nga yung base? Ito yung pinaka plastic. Okay. It is a supporting layer in film called the base. This base has to be transparent. Okay. With some optical density, free from imperfections, chemically stable, insensitive, photographically, and resistant to any moisture and pressing chemicals, while remaining mechanically strong, resistant to tearing, flexible, and dimensionally stable. And then we also have the anti halation backing, para nga hindi masira, di ba, yung pinaka emulsions. It is the light penetrating the emulsion of a film, can reflect from the base emulsions, interference back into the Emulsions, para hindi siya tumatagos kay base. So, causing a secondary exposure around the images of bright objects. So, the secondary image or halation causes an undesirable reduction in the sharpness of the image and some light scattering. An anti-halation layer, a dark coating on or in the film base will absorb the minimize this reflection. Ayan na, meron na tayong yellow filter. It is the layer between the yellow dye forming coupler magenta dye forming in the emulsions which absorbs any unused blue light and prevents it from the reaching the two layer emulsion layer. The magenta dye and the cyan dye forming couplers. Ito yung pinaka gawa ni yellow filter. So the yellow colors in the filters layers have no permanent effect on the appearance of the film because it destroys during processing. Nawawala din yan. Then we also have the subbing layer. It is the subbing layer applied to the film based so that emotions adheres to the base. Parang ito yung pinaka pandikit nila. Okay? Para lang dumikit. Kaya sabi adheres to the base. Then we also have the UV layer or the UV absorbing layer. Although we can see ultraviolet radiation, photosensitive silver halide crystals can be exposed by it. An ultraviolet absorbing layer is included to protect the imaging layers from exposure by UV radiation. Kasi di ba nakakatanggap din tayo ng UV light pero hindi lang natin to nakikita. So ganun din kapag sa mga films. Since gagamitin nga natin yung film kapag mag uh, take tayo ng uh, photo, so papasok yung light sa camera, di ba? Papasok yan, yun ang magre-react sa ating film. So there is a tendency na papasok din yung UV light. Kaya niya nilalagyan ng ultraviolet absorbing layer para hindi masira yung pinaka-form ng image. Then the last one, okay, the super coat. It is the top layer of the film. The purpose of this is the clear layer of hardened gelatin is to protect the emulsions from damage during transport to the camera. So that is the super coat. Kumbaga sa Qtex, ito yung pinaka uh, colorless para maprotektahan yung design ng uh, pinaka sa nail art mo. Ganun siya. So, that it's the parts of the color film. Sana pinakikinggan nyo ako magsimula nung una kasi yan ang gagawin nyo sa activity. Okay. What are the types of color film? We have different types of color film yan. Number one, we have the color reversal film. And then, the color negative film. Yun lang. Dalawa lang sila. Okay. Sa so color reversal film. Yung color reversal film, parang ito na yung parang black and white. So, commonly called slide film or color positive film. It creates the opposites of ne color negative film or black and white film. Di ba ano nga yung sa black and white film? Kung ano yung maputi kapag na-print siya yung magiging color? White. Ay, color black. I'm sorry. Kung ano yung maputi, kung ano yung na-print siya yung magiging color black. Kung ano yung color black sa film, kapag na-print siya yung magiging color white. So, ganun yung color reversal film. Meron din pag nakita nyo, okay, uh, next week ko papakita sa inyo. Pag pinakita mo sa mismong film is parang yung anino. Yung anino niya, masyado siyang dark. Kapag na-print, yun yung pinaka-light. Ganun sila. Instead of creating negative to be printed to a positive, the slide film is a positive of the images. So as such, the slide film produces extremely rich and vibrant colors that come closer to the closer in tones present during exposure. Alternatively, slide film is not nearly as flexible as color negative or black and white film. Exposure must be precise and areas of high contrast are much more difficult to properly expose with the side with slide film. Etong why uh, color 
color reversal film na to is medyo ano, sensitive talaga siya sa color. So, slides can be printed in the dark room, but the process is generally more expensive. Ayan o, oh, kikita nyo ba yan? Ganyan siya. As the name reversal suggests, ganyan, okay? The slide film works on the opposite of the print film. So, in the print film, the red, green, and blue emotion layers are exposed and leave a negative dye of cyan, magenta, and yellow. Ayan siya. So, slide film is a subtractive process that starts with layers of cyan, magenta, and yellow. When the film is exposed, the dye is subtracted to reveal the red, green, and blue. Baligtad siya, di ba, sa color film. So, para makakaila, ang nagsusubtract sila dito. Yung doon kanina nga sa explanation nga natin, di ba, ang nangyayari, pinagpapatong nila yung red, green, and blue para maproduce yung ating secondary colors. Dito naman, nagsusubtract sila. So, thus, when processed the film, it reveals the actual positive colors of the images. So, that is the reversal film works. Okay na tayo. Yan yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. Ganyan. Then, we also have the color negative film. Diba? It is also known as the color print film. Ayan. It is the type of film usually found in the convenience stores. Color negative film is very much uh, what you see is what you get. Ito na yung kung ano yan. Ayan. Makikita mo talaga na ah, ito parang color red. Dito parang color white, ganyan. It yields true to life colors and contrast, which is preferred by the portrait and wedding photographers. It is suffix color, okay, being given to the negative or non-reversal film. It examples are Kodak color, Fuji color, uh, Aga Agfa color, and so on and so forth. Again, kapag color negative film, what you see is what you get. Ganto na siya agad. Ang, pina, ang kinaiba niya kay color reversal films, ganito siya. So, ang makikita mo sa film nun, parang ganito yan. Pero kapag na-print, ganito siya color. Naiintindihan na po ba niyan? Naiintindihan niyo ba ako? Or nakakasunod kayo? Anong pinagkaiba ng color reversal film sa color negative film? Nakikita na agad sa negative ah. film, ma'am. Sa so, color negative film, talagang mapapansin mo na ano yung colors, di ba? Katulad neto. Ayan. Diba? Makita mo na agad. Pero sa atin, dito sa ating color reversal film, baligtad naman siya. Inverse nga po siya. Yung kung ano yung color white, siya yung magiging black. Kung ano yung color black, siya yung magiging white. Naka nagkakaintindihan ba tayo niyan? Again, those are the two types of color film. Color negative film and the color reversal film. Hindi naman kayo mali dito kasi reversal, baligtad. Okay, negative, ibig sabihin, what you say is what you get. So, how film color works? Ayan. Color film consists of an acetate or polyester film based with multiple emulsions coated on the base. Kaya ilang layers nga meron ang film? How many layers? A color film has? Seven. Seven. So, each emulsion layer is only sensitive to specific colors of light. In the classic example of color sensitives are red, green, and blue. So, the top layer of film is blue sensitive as all the silver-based films have some sensitivity to blue light. Beneath the blue layers are green, red, and sensitive layers. Because of the complexity of the emulsion layers, color film can be exposed over a wide range of lighting condition and is much more flexible than black and white slide films. Kasi nga, di ba, yung mga color film work, yung mga color films, sensitive siya sa all types of light. Hindi ka tulad ng black and white. So, when the color film is developed, dye couplers within each red, green, and blue, ano nga yung mga couplers natin? Ito yung mga pa para maproduce yung cyan, magenta, and yellow dyes. When developed, resulting an inverse image. So, let's watch this one. Paano? Ito naman. Tingnan nyo kung paano nila pinaprocess yung pinaka-film. Okay, again. Question. Okay, question muna. Kapag po ba nagpa-process ng film, ma'am, kailangan may ilaw? Wala po. Wala. Kasi nga, sabi ko nga, kapag na-expose siya sa ilaw, masisira. masisira. Kaya ang nangyayari, kaya meron tayong dark room. Okay? Kasi after nating magamitin yung mismong uh, film sa camera, kukuhanin mo yan. E di nakabalik na siya sa bahay niya. Ito yung bahay niya. This is the film house. Ayan. Okay? 
gagawin nyo yan, lalagay nyo yan sa pinaka parang reels. Yan, reels ang tawag natin dyan. Sayang nga wala tayo sa face-to-face. -face. Pinapagawa ko yan sa dark room ng total darkness, pabilisan makalagay ng film sa mismong uh, reels. Okay, let's watch this one. Kasi meron tayong part doon sa midterms wherein pag-uusapan natin yung chemical processing, kung paano pinaprocess yung film, at saka yung photographic paper. Okay, nakita nyo yun, nag, nag, kapag na-process na yung film na yan within that tank, nalagyan ng chemicals, doon palang lalabas yung pinaka-color or pinaka-design or ano yung naging na-result na images. Okay, next. Yan na. So, Tapos na tayo dun sa unang sensitized material. Ano na yung next? It is the photographic paper. Okay. Ma'am, yung photographic paper, nakakita na po ako. Nakakita na ba kayo? Nakakita na kayo ng photographic paper? Ayun po ba yung ginawa namin, ma'am? Hindi. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, pwede pa kayo sa exam? Hindi pa po. Hindi. Iba ang Ayun photographic paper. Hindi. Yung photo paper na nakita nyo kapag nagpiprint yes, lang kayo, yes, simply... Yes, no, ang photo, iba ang photo paper sa photographic paper. Hindi okay. nagpiprinter niya. Hindi, hindi siya pwedeng gamitin sa printer lang. Okay, kasi ang photographic paper, sensitive din siya sa light. Sensitive din po sa light ang photographic paper. So, saan siya ginagamit? Sa dark room. Gumagamit po ba ng printer? Hindi. Hindi tayo gumagamit ng printer dito. Ang ginagamit natin dito, enlarger and contact printer. Ibang klaseng printer, hindi yan gumag... Uh, di siya dumadaan sa electric. Okay? So, photographic paper is a paper coated with a light-sensitive chemical formula. Meron din tong silver halides. Used for making photographic prints. When photographic paper is exposed to light, ayan, it captures a latent image that is then developed to form a visible image. The light-sensitive layer of the paper is called emulsion. Sabi ka sa inyo, meron sila ulit, emulsion. Ibig sabihin, hindi ito yung, hindi ito yung katulad ng mga photo paper na binibili nyo sa mall. Diba nga, naka-display yung mga yon. Ito, nakatago yung mga yan, naka-box, naka-sealed talaga. Kasi kapag nailawan siya, eh sira na, hindi, ka na ma hindi, ka, hindi mo na yan magagamit. So, tignan nyo. These are uh, example. Ikakat-kat ko tong video na to kasi medyo mahaba siya. Hi, I'm Rachel from Little Vintage Photography and this is going to be a whistle stop tour across the Ilford range of papers. Using different photographic paper stock in the darkroom is a really simple but effective way of bringing some creativity and variety to your work. Choosing the right photographic paper stock for you and your work is actually a very personal choice and you might find that it changes depending on the subject matter. And there's other things to consider such as who is it for? Where's it going to be displayed? Is it for the wall? Is it to go into an album? Does it need to be archival? There's really no right and wrong answer. It's all down to personal choice. Generally, these papers are split into two types. We have resin coated and we have fiber based papers and we're going to look at some of those today. Resin coated papers are simple to work with because they have a coating on them that makes them easier to handle. They're also quite economical when it comes to washing, so you do your develop, your stop and your fix. Then when you're in your final wash, all you need to do is leave them there for a couple of minutes, two to five minutes, and they will be done. 
They also come in different tones and finishes, and I've got some examples here. At the top, there's the multi-grade resin coated Deluxe, which is a kind of neutral tone. In the centre, I've got the multi-grade resin coated warm tone and at the bottom, the multi-grade resin coated cool tone, which has a quite silvery blue finish to it. Quick note about where it says Okay, nakita nyo ba yung pinaka, ito, yung parang nasa likod niya? Ha, kikita nyo ba siya? Yung nasa likod niya na color black, na box na to? Yan yung printer natin. Okay, yan ang printer natin sa photographic, ah, uh, paper. So, lalagay nila yung film dito sa pinaka-pinakataas. Okay? Puputulin nila yan. And then, lalagyan nila lang nila ng light. I-expose nila sa light. Dark room to ha. And then, red light lang ang naka-open. Yung pinaka-safe light natin. And then, lalagay nila yung photographic paper dito sa pinaka-box niya sa ilalim. So, then, ma-expose siya sa light. Doon palang magkakaroon ng print. Hindi siya dadaan ng makina or whatever na printer. So, that is the photographic paper. Yung mga boxes na nakikita nyo, ayan, dyan po ang photographic paper natin. Nakasild yan ng black and white pang, ay, nakasild talaga yan ng color black pa na plastic kasi nga, bawal talaga itong ma-expose sa light kasi katulad ng film, they are sensitive to the light. So, pinutol ko na kasi masyadong mahaba yan. So, isa sa mga assignments nyo sa akin or sa pinaka-laboratory activities nyo is to research on the different types of film uh, Photographic papers, kanwara, yung mga mat, glossy, ganyan. So, let's go with the next slide. Yan. Black and white photographic paper. So, all photographic papers consist of light-sensitive emulsions, consisting of silver halide salts suspended in the collodial material, usually gelatin coated into a paper resin coated paper or polyester support in black and white papers the emulsion is normally sensitized to blue and green light but it is insensitive to wavelength longer than 600 nanometer in order to facilitate handling under the red or orange safe lighting so usually itong mga photographic paper natin is sensitive to saan blue and green light bakit po para kapag nagtrabaho sila, eh, katul kagagamitin nila yung pinaka-enlarger natin na printer or yung contact printer natin, i-expose na sila sa light, gagamitin nila tong red light. Okay? That answers the question kung bakit yung dark room natin, okay? Bakit yung dark room natin, eh, red light lang siya. Okay? Kasi yung mga photographic papers natin, sensitive siya sa blue and green. Pero hindi siya sensitive sa red light. Next. So, these are the characteristics of black and white photographic paper. Kung merong characteristics yung ating black and white film, meron din po ang ating photographic paper. Number one, we have the emotion speed, exposure and development latitude, contrast or range or grade, and the physical characteristics. So, balik tayo dito. Apat siya ha. Emotion speed. Ibig sabihin, gaano kabilis. Pa, kung merong mabilis na film, di ba? meron din pong mabilis at mabagal na photographic paper. So, let's start first with the chloride paper. Kapag yung mga chloride paper, it is relatively slow printing paper with coated in an emulsion of silver chloride used mostly for contact prints. Okay. Ang chloride paper, ibig sabihin, slow printing paper, mabagal siya. Okay? It involves na kanwari, i-expose mo muna siya light, magka-count ka ng 10 seconds, ganyan, or 1 minute para lang mabuo yung pinaka-images. So, that is a chloride paper. Slow printing paper. At saan siya ginagamit? Sa contact prints. Mam, ano yung contact prints? Ang contact prints, kung kanwari, gaano kalaki yung film mo, kung 35mm siya, ganun din siya mapiprint. Ganun din siya kaliit. Okay? Ganun ang contact prints. For example, oh, ano yung size ng film mo? 35mm. Therefore, ganun din kaliit yung mapiprint. That is contact prints. Yung tinatawag naman na enlargement, kahit di ba maliit lang yung film, pero yung napiprint niya, bakit ang laki? Okay? Yun yung pinakita ko sa kanina sa video, yung sa likod, kung yung ginagamit nila na pang print. Ayan. So, from that na maliit, kapag inilawa nila, magiging malaki, doon siya mapupunta sa photographic paper. So, kapag ginagamit naman nila sa fast printing paper, ayan, ang gagamitin nila is bromide. 
paper. It is a fast printing paper coated with an emulsion of silver bromide used mostly for enlargements. Para sa mas mala para mag nagpo-produce sila ng mas malaking photos. 'Di ba ang lead lang ng film pero yung na-print sa ating photographic paper ang laki-laki. 'Yun ang ginagamit nila, the bromide paper and the enlarger. Then, syempre, meron tayong chlorobromide paper. Kaya siya, chlorobromide paper, it is a combination of chloride and bromide paper. It is a photographic paper coated with sensitive layer of a mixture, silver bromide and silver chloride, giving a medium emulsion speed used for contact printing or enlarging. So, yung chlorobromide paper, hindi siya ganun kabilis, hindi rin siya ganun kabagal. Kakaintindihan tayo. Hello? Ano nga yung mabagal na fill ah, paper? Photographic paper? Chloride. Chloride. Kapilis, bromide. Okay. Bromide. Kapag medium lang, chloro, bromide. For enlarger prints, para mas ma kapag mas malaki yung ginagamit natin or mas malaki yung gusto nating ma-print, anong gagamitin nating paper? Bromide. Bromide. Okay. Madali lang tandaan, di ba? Next, another characteristics of black and white photographic paper is the exposure and development latitude. So, what is the exposure and development latitude? So, latitude, it is the degree or amount of which you can deviate from the ideal exposure or development without appreciable loss of print quality. So, we have the exposure latitude and the development latitude. It is the extent to which a light-sensitive material can be overexposed or underexposed and still achieve an acceptable result. And the last one, we have the development latitudes. Papers do not change appreciable in contrast and image tone. With reasonable variation in development has a good latitude. However, for the best quality, okay, the developing time should be as near as those prescribed by the manufacturer. Itong latitude na to, ito yung pinaka, uh, tawag ito, pinakasukatan nila kung gaano katagal nila i-expose or hindi. Dito rin nila nalaman kung overexpose or underexpose itong photographic film. So, meron siyang uh, tawag dito, guide. Then, we also have the contrast or range or grade. Ayan. Grade 0 and 1 are used on an overexpose or low contrast negative. Grade 2, it is used on normal exposed or normal contrast negative. And grade 3 to 5 are used in underexposed or high contrast negative. Ma'am, ano yung negative na sinatawag nila dyan? Ito po yung mga films or yung process films. Again, kapag nakita nyo yung word na negatives na yan, ito yung tinatawag nating process films. Pag sinabing process films, these are the films that are uh, na-process na or nag-come up na, nagkaroon na ng image. Okay? Negatives po ang tawag to. Pakita ko sa inyo ano yung negative na yun. Saan ba kasi yun? Dito yata yun. Eh. Yan! Ito yung negatives. Kapag yan, yung, uh, yung mismong film, eh, lumabas na yung ganyan niya, yung pinaka-color niya. Okay? Nag-produce na siya ng image, nakikita nyo na yan. Hindi na yan masisira kahit i-expose nyo yan sa light. Ibig sabihin, na-process na yan. Nag-undergo na, na siya ng chemical processing. Yung pinakita ko sa inyo kanina na nilalagay nila sa loob ng bote, nilalagay nila sa reels, sa nilalagay na ng chemicals, yan na yan. So, kahit ma-expose na yan sa light, wala na yung, uh, hindi na yan masisira. Ipiprint mo na lang talaga yan. Okay po? Yan ang tinatawag nating negatives. So, balik tayo dun sa ating slide. So, yun yun. Kaya siya, nag, bakit nagkakaroon ng contrast or range or grade? Kasi minsan, yung mga film, sira yung pagkakaano niya, di ba? Yung pagkakaprocesses niya sa chemical. So, minsan malabo or minsan parang kulang or minsan naman underexposed, minsan overexposed. So, ang mag-ano nun, ang mag-adjust para makuha pa rin natin yung tamang kulay, para makuha pa rin natin yung tamang image, gagamitan nila ng contrast or range or grade itong photographic paper. Reremedyohan nila para makuha natin yung tamang image or ma-print natin yung tamang photo graphic paper. And the last one, the physical characteristics naman ng ating black and white photographic paper. So we have the surface, base weight or thickness and the color. So ano yung surface niya? So photographic papers vary in surface texture. Sabi nga sa inyo merong gloss, merong sheen, merong matte, 
Ayan. They are glossy and smooth, semi-matte or silk, and the matte or the rough surface. Yan ang assignment nyo sa akin or yung lab activity number 6 nyo. You will research on the different types of the photographic paper, katulad ng mga maghanap kayo ng gloss, uh, sheen, smooth, semi-matte, and then you will explain to me, okay? Mag-provide kayo ng photo and then you will explain saan ginagamit yung gloss, bakit siya naging gloss, yan. Kailan ginagamit yung mga semi-matte? Okay? Kailan siya best ginagamit ang semi-matte? At bakit nila ginagamit yung mga semi-matte? Ganun lang. So, another physical characteristic is the base weight or thickness. ba? Kung gaano siya kabigat. Under this category, we have the light weight, single weight, medium weight, and the double weight. Gaano kabigat yung mismong paper. And then, we also have the color. Ayan. Maybe cold or white or very slight blue cast, and the warm or cream, where the white has a slight yellow-brown line. And that is the color. Usually, parang white lang din siya. Different tones lang. Parang may beige, parang nasobran sa blue. Ganun lang siya. So, those are the physical characteristics of the black and white photographic paper. Punta tayo ngayon kay color photographic paper. So, photographic printing papers are coated, again, with light-sensitive emulsions or mga silver halides and usually made up of three emulsion layers. Ano yung three emulsion layers natin? Siyempre, nandun na ulit yung blue, red, and green. Each sensitive to different wavelength of light. As they are sensitive to all lights, they must be handled with care in a pitch black dark room. Ayan, or with a very dim and obscure amber safe lights. All the photographic papers come packaged inside a lightproof black plastic bag. Sabi nga sa inyo, naka-cover pa, naka pa ng color black na plastic para lang hindi talaga siya ma-expose sa light. Inside a cardboard box. Katulad nung nasa video, yung nasa gilid ng babae, makapal po yun na box para nga hindi talaga mapasokan ng light. So, make sure to keep paper inside the sealed bag and box at all times. So, especially when printing in a community lab where someone might turn on the white light without warning. So, color photographic paper that is accidentally exposed to light will be fog. Kapag kasi yan accidentally na-exposed sa light, yung mga colored paper or mga photographic paper natin, ano magiging resulta? Magkakaroon ng fog. Nakakita kayo ng fog? Parang malabo. Diba? Fog, fog paper is unusable. Hindi mo na pwedeng gamitin yan. As it produces a gray-colored veil in affected areas. Handle paper by the edge and corners. Do not bend. Paper will crease or touch the image area. Fingerprints will be permanent. Kaya kapag ginahawak nila yung mismo photographic paper, hindi nila pwedeng, ah, kailangan alam nila yung likod at saka yung harap. Yung likod, yung pwede mong hawakan. Ibig sabihin, yun yung pinaka-plastic niya, di ba? Ibig sabihin, yun yung pinaka-back paper ng photographic paper. Yung pinaka-harap na merong silver halides, bawal mong hawakan yun. Bakit? Mapiprint or magiging permanent yung ating fingerprints. So, fingerprints are more likely to show up on a glossy paper. So, what are the characteristics of color photographic paper? We have the color surface and weight. Tatlo lang naman siya. Again, color, di ba? Ganun lang din yan. Parang pareho lang siya ng black and white. So, each each brand of color paper tends to produce certain colors indifferently. The variations are slight and not advertised. But you may notice that the one brand prints is a little warmer or cooler than the other or certain colors are more or less vibrant. Pero, ibig, hindi ibig sabihin magiging black yung photographic paper nila. Yung photographic paper nila is still white pa rin. Kaso, naging iba parang may beige na siya, parang medyo cream, parang medyo light blue, ganun siya. This is the result of the different dyes and paper base used by the manufacturer. Ano yung surface niya? Ito tayo nagkakaiba-iba. Merong matte, diba? semi-matte, meron ding pearl or luster, glossy surfaces. So, matte papers, tandaan nyo, ano yung matte? Nakita na kayo ng matte? O, oh, mga babae, oh, oh, oh. Nila, matte. kapag sinabi natin matte, hindi sila glossy, hindi sila kumikintab. So, matte papers are lesser reflective than glossy papers. Glossy papers naman tend to make the image sharper. So, if you want a sharper image, then use glossy paper. So, 
ganon, madami yung mga surface ng ating ating photographic paper. So, yun ang nasa laboratory activity nyo. So, and the last characteristics of color photographic paper, syempre, it is the weight. Gaano siya kabigat? So, most color papers are medium weight, though each brand will have slightly different thickness. Boxes containing sheets of paper come in the following standard size. Ayan, may 8 by 10, 11 by 14 yan. For mural prints or yung mas malaking prints, paper are usually available in rolls. Hindi nila binabox yan, nira-roll nila kasi mas malaki. Which can be as large as 72 by 100. If pressing in a machine processor, check to see the width of the fit tray. So that is the color photographic paper. So that ends our discussions about the uh, about the sensitized materials again what are the sensitized materials that we have in photographic paper what are the sensitized materials